I'm super excited to look at this Mobula 6 HD Zero. It comes in at an amazing 23.5 grams, the same weight as some of the whoops I have that are analog. So it's just amazing that a 65 millimeter whoop can come in with 23.5 grams, have HD digital FPV quality video feed. So this just blows my mind, <laughs> it just really does. So that's why I'm so excited about this, the Happy Model Mobula 6 HD Zero. So let's go ahead and dig into this thing. So in the box, you get a spare canopy, you get the quad itself, you get a bag of parts, which includes a screwdriver, prop removal tool, some spare props. Uh, it looks like the back of the camera, it's a cover for the camera. They removed it to lighten the quad up. And then you get what looks like a programming cable with a little uh, breakout board. I'll have to figure that out. And then you get some spare screws. And then of course, uh, some stickers. Quickly going through the specs, the wheelbase of course is 65 millimeters. The flight controller is the Super B F4 Lite flight controller. The one I bought has the built-in Express LRS SPI receiver. The motors here are the Unibel uh, EX0802 19,000 kV motors. Uh, the props are the Gemfan 1210 31 millimeter props. They have it in a props out configuration or reverse props. Rotation, uh, the camera is the new HD0 nano light camera. And then of course the star of the show is the HD0 Whoop Light VTX board that is 1S capable. And uh, so overall, it's uh, pretty much uh, state-of-the-art technology. You can see that um, here's the um, Express LRS antenna for the flight controller coming out of the bottom here. And then the VTX is a simple dipole antenna coming out of the top. For a weight, it does look like it's meeting spec. It's coming in at 24 grams. It's specced at 23.5 grams. And that's about as accurate as my uh, scale will go. So 24 grams is very close to what it was specced. Then binding it to my transmitter and putting on my rates, I'm gonna try and fly this thing as stock as possible.
are my reasons why I think this is the best Whoop of 2022. Let's compare it to the original Mobula 6 that came out. This is probably the most popular uh, Whoop out there. So as far as specs, uh, the camera on this thing is just incredible. Um, the contrast is great, the color's great, as compared to what comes with the Mobula 6 original one. Um, it's just, uh, you just can't believe that something this small in light has a 720p digital FPV video feed to your goggles. It's just uh, amazing. In fact, you kind of think you're flying a, a five inch drone uh, just because of the video feed. And it kind of fakes you out because you're out there flying and you go, oh wow, this I'm flying a whoop. <laughs> but it, the, the video quality is so good, it feels like it's uh, something that's, uh, you know, flying uh, uh, some five inch, that's a DJI um, uh, five inch drone. And so you kind of forget that you're flying a whoop until you try and do a barrel roll or a power loop or you go, oh wow, yeah, this is <laughs> definitely a whoop but it is just uh, pretty amazing, the video feed on this thing. So you're comparing 1280 lines of resolution on the um, newer HD uh, zero version of the Mobula 6 versus um, 800 TVL or 800 lines of resolution on the original Mobula 6. As far as the VTXs, of course, this only supported 25 milliwatts. This supports up to 200 milliwatts. So significantly longer range on this. Um, also, uh, the receivers, this is Express LRS, so it has range that takes this thing out further than you should ever fly it because if you somehow, it's not, it's not gonna fail safe, but let's say that, that you run out of battery or something like that, you're, this thing will fly way further than you should and you'll never find it if you fly it as far as this thing is capable of going and you, end up crashing into something and dropping to the ground versus the original Mobula 6. Um, you know, it's supported FR Sky SPI receiver on this that was built in. You know, it's okay range, it's good, you know, for indoors, but outdoors, it definitely limited this one. Um, as far as the motors, uh, the motors are both 0802, 19,000 kV motors. Um, these are just way better motors, the, the bells on here the bill housing is a, a unibell, whereas um, the older version is not. And they just seem to be more efficient. Now I know they're running bi-blade props here and tri-blades here, but the, the motors just seems to be more efficient over here because this is three grams heavier um, when you get it, when you look at the specs. And so that's what I'm gonna talk about next. I mean, this is three grams heavier than, so this comes in at 23 gram, 23.5, and this comes in at, at 20 grams but you're getting HD digital FPV feed in. So it's just amazing just for, you know, three and a half grams, um, you're getting, a, you know, 720p resolution. So overall, um, you know, the technology is just uh, leaps and bounds further along on this. And that's just over, you know, a couple of years time. So again, uh, the technology is advancing so quickly and FPV, it, it still amazes me and that's why this hobby is so fun. Um, as far as flight characteristics, um, if you look at it as far as flight time, it's even though this is uh, three and a half ground heavier, it's just more efficient with the by blades. I, you know, just typical flying, I was getting three and a half to four minutes if you're just cruising on this one versus three to three and a half on the the standard version of the Mobula 6. And that's why I went with the standard because at the time, the race version is 25,000 kV. Um, it was only getting like two and a half to three minutes if you're, you know, if you're pushing it, maybe three minutes, 15 seconds. Um, so that's why I went with the 19,000 kV version of that. But you're getting a whole half minute longer with this. And so the next thing I like is it's easier to fly. Uh, the tune on this is great. Um, it's just very stable in the air. It's a great little um, proximity flyer. And um, it really, f it, I think for a new pilot, um, it's way easier to fly. It reminds me of the 
uh, newbie drone Acro B V3. It just uh, I think it would be a good starter drone. Although I guess the problem is you know you have to invest in the HD zero goggles and system. No drone is perfect, and this is no exception. So one niggle I have is really the pigtail is too short. Um, I like flying, you know, the newbie drone Nitro Nectar. This one happens to be a 250 um, milliamp hour battery, um, but you can see it's just not long enough. And so it kind of, it forces you into using batteries that are like the happy model batteries. I, I'm sure they do that because of that um, with the, the lead here. So they could have just made the pigtail. I mean, that's easy to correct. Just put a longer pigtail on it, but um, they could have made it, you know, uh, about an eighth of an inch longer and it would have made it uh, to where you could connect it um, to, you know, nitro nectar type batteries that don't have, have the battery lead on them. Uh, the other niggle I have is this thing can overheat, so keep that in mind. Um, all VTXs get hot, but if you're running this thing at 200 milliwatts um, and you're outside and it's 95 degrees, you can't just let it sit there and get hot. You need to have airflow over it. So please keep that in mind. But that's true for any digital HD um, FPV system out there. You just can't, even the, the DJI um, air unit, you just can't let it sit there. It'll overheat and shut off. So... Um, it just happens to be more pronounced um, with this one. Um, even the original Mobula 6, I mean, it's a, it's not a good idea just to let them sit there and bake in the sun. I mean, they will overheat. Um, this one just overheats a lot quicker. So um, that's the other, it's not really a, a niggle. It's just the nature of the beast. In summary, the digital HD video feed on this thing, again, is just mind blowing. Uh, you just have to experience it. Uh, and that's the reason why it's mind blowing for me is because traditionally um, the whoops that you get have one of the worst video feeds out there uh, and cameras. It's just uh, the color's bad, it's very grainy, um, and so you just kind of put up with it. So when you get something like this, you're going, whoa. Is this a whoop I'm flying? And you quickly realize it because it has all the limitations that ducks and and uh, whoops have um, as far as acro capability. But uh, it's just uh, a game changer in my mind. And then also, I think the price is very competitive at $199.99, so essentially $200 US. Uh, and then lastly, this thing is extremely well behaved as far as the way its flight characteristics are. I mean, indoors, and for outdoor cruising, it's just very stable. It's just super easy to fly, even in acro. I, if you, um, you know, uh, the tune again just seems to be set up for cruising and and exploring and proximity flying. So if you're into that, highly recommend this. And if you're somebody that uh, you know already has the HD Zero system, let's say that you're a racer. A lot of racers use HD Zero. I'd highly recommend this if you want something that you can fly indoors in the winter. So with that, um, I greatly appreciate you tuning into my channel.